Alright everybody, what's up? It's Voodoo51292 and tonight I'm going to be doing a kind of a reveal slash thoughts slash reactions video to um, this kit which is actually the birthday present that I got from my grandparents which it's funny because I actually, uh, this is early too, I actually don't get or my birthday is actually not until the 12th of May and so uh, I didn't even think I was getting this early, but they said, oh, you can just have it since you have the telescope early. So this is basically an upgrade kit, not necessarily an upgrade kit, but an accessories kit for my telescope, the Orion Star Blast 6 Reflector Telescope. Uh, well, really, I'm sure for, for many different telescopes, but that's, that's a telescope that I have. And so basically it's uh, a couple of uh, new lenses a lens attachment and some filters that I'm going to show to you and kind of talk to you a little bit about uh, each one. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is turn this around here and open it up to show you what's in here. Okay, so here we go. Oh, the glare is real bad coming off that, isn't it? If I do that, then the glare is not so bad. Turn it up and zoom in. Okay. So that's pretty good. There's no glare. Alright, so you see some things in here. You see three things up top, and you see these four things down at the bottom. So the first thing, and I think the, th the thing that I wanted most of all out of this kit is this piece here. And what this is, is as you can see, this is an Orion shorty two times Barlow lens which I've talked about many times in the past is Barlow lens and what this actually is let me take the uh, protective stuff off so I can actually show you what this is okay but as you can see this actually has a lens inside of it okay and um, it is a, a accessory, sorry, it's my phone vibrating, an accessory that goes first into your telescope where the eyepiece would be, and then the eyepiece actually goes in the top of this. And what it does is it doubles the magnification of any eyepiece. So, for instance, if you have a, a 10 millimeter eyepiece, if you put it in the Barlow lens, it turns into basically a 5 millimeter eyepiece, and so forth. So it doubles the magnification of any of your lenses, which is really important and good for viewing things like planets and things like that if you want to get close in and get good detail. So this is probably the main thing I wanted out of this. So pretty cool. So I'm going to repack it, per se. Okay, so that's that. Then, uh, pretty cool, I get two brand new eyepieces and they look they should look very similar to the two that I showed you initially with the telescope when I first showed it and they are the same uh, brand of eyepiece but they are different magnifications okay so the one here on the end is actually uh, again it's a Sirius Plossel which is the same company that I have the the first two eyepieces from now this is a 20 mil uh, eyepiece. Now the two that, that came with the telescope was a 25 mil eyepiece and a 10 mil eyepiece. The 25, the, the higher uh, the number of um, millimeters, the wider the field of view. So the 25 millimeter was the wide field, while the 10 millimeter is a much closer zoomed in lens. This one, the 20 millimeter, sits between the two, um, between the 25 millimeter and the uh, 10 millimeter. And uh, so it, it basically just gives you another intermediate kind of magnification if you're looking at something like a star cluster or a nebula or whatever, and you, you know, the optimal zoom would be between those two, you can use this eyepiece. And I'm not sure how much I will use this eyepiece actually, but it is nice to have. Now, if you'll remember, when I showed you the 25 millimeter eyepiece and the 10 millimeter eyepiece, the viewing area was quite a bit different. For the 25 millimeter, this entire area was a viewing area because it was a very wide field thing. And for the 10 millimeter, it was basically a little bitty circle, a little hole 
uh, that you could barely see because it was so zoomed in. But as you can tell, at the 20, 20 millimeter, it's in the middle, as you can see. It's not the entire thing as a viewing area. It's not one dot. It's a decent viewing area size, but it is uh, significantly smaller than the 25 millimeter because it's a little bit more zoomed in. So this is the first eyepiece. And then the second one works very well with the, the Barlow lens. This is a little tiny one, as you can see. This is, get it in the camera here, a 7.5 millimeter Sirius Plossel. And this is the highest magnification lens I had. Like I just said, the, the highest magnification that came with the telescope was a 10 millimeter. This is a 7.5 millimeter, which is a, even a further zoom. Now check this out. If you thought the viewing area on the 10 millimeter was small, check out the viewing area on the 7.5. Okay, that's actually, I, I think it's a little bit smaller. I don't have the 10 millimeter with me upstairs here, but I think it's even smaller than the 10 millimeter. Okay, so basically bottom line, this eyepiece is going to be literally impossible to film through. There's no chance of that happening, of, of getting the camera to go through that tiny of an eye hole. Okay, it's just not gonna happen. But this is very zoomed in, okay, and it really allows for some close up, um, some close up shots of planets and uh, that type of thing. So really useful to have this eyepiece, and I know I'm going to be using this eyepiece a lot when viewing planets and things like that in combination with the Barlow. So. These are the lenses, okay? The two extra lenses that I got, as well as the Barlow attachment. Fits right there. Then I have these four things here, which are actually filters, all right? And I should probably change the order of this, just because it will make me feel better. Um, so this first filter over here is a lunar filter, or a glare filter, while these other three are simply color, color band filters, all right? So if we take a look here at the lunar filter, they're, they're packaged in these really, that's the one complaint I have. These boxes that contain the filters are not very well made, they're pretty cheap. But this is a glare filter, and you can tell, here, this is what I like to use as an example. Let's see if I can get this to work on the camera. See, if I point this camera up at this light, okay, that's very bright and has a lot of glare to it, right? Now if I put the filter in front of the camera, you see what it does? You see how it reduces, now obviously through a camera it's not going to be perfect, but you see how it reduces that glare, okay? Especially on the middle light there. You see how it reduces it on the left light too. See, it's very bright in the camera. When I put the filter over it, it drastically reduces that glare, all right? And that's basically what this filter does. And in, so it's very good for, it's basically a lunar filter. They call it a neutral neutral density, all kinds of like weird names, but it's very good for looking at the moon because it really cuts down the glare coming off the moon and lets you see a lot better detail on the moon's surface and things. So that's basically what this first uh, thing is. And if you want to know how these work, they actually are threaded, which there's no point in trying to show you that because I doubt I could even do it. The camera's at a very weird angle, so... So is it threaded on? Here we go. Maybe you can't see that. It's threaded. And see, any uh, any eyepiece, it just screws right into the bottom. See this? It just screws right in there, just like that. And now you've got a filtered eyepiece. And then you can put this right in the in the eyepiece slot or the Barlow lens. So that's how all these filters work. They, they're just uh, threaded, and they screw right onto the end of your... These are for... Uh, one and a quarter inch uh, eyepieces, which are, are pretty much the standard, I find. Um, which all my eyepieces are one and a quarter, but they do have different ones. So that's that. And then you've got your three color filters here. And there are descriptions on Orion's website, which I don't have with me, but there are descriptions as far as what, the, as what you can use these different filters for. Um, and things like that. Uh, you can use different colored filters on different planets to kind of bring out some more detail. But uh, as you can see, this here is a red filter. You can pretty clearly see the colors when I lay them out like this. The blue filter, 
and the yellow filter, okay, and this is, they have numbers, this is number 12 yellow, this is number 80A blue, and this is number 25 red, and you can use these filters to do certain, like filter out certain, certain uh, lights, um, to bring out detail on certain planets, um, bring out certain cloud bands, things of that nature, so that's basically what the color filters are for, okay? So, bottom line, a pretty neat accessory uh, pack for the telescope, okay? And it all comes in a nice, uh, a nice metal carrying case that's compact. Again, the only complaint I have with the packaging is these cheap cases that these lenses come in that are not like hinged or anything, so they're just kind of like... They're just not very sturdy at all, but uh, as long as they're in there and in this metal case with the foam, it should be okay. The case for the yellow one is the worst. It doesn't close all the way on one side. It's pretty cheapy, but no, it did. No, no, it still doesn't. It still comes open on one side. Anyway, so there you go. All right, this is the pack now. I got a little bit of a chance to use some of this stuff tonight before it got too cloudy, alright? And basically what I did was I looked at three planets, because that's really... I wanted the Barlow lens big time for planetary viewing, because the magnification I was getting out of just the simple 25 and the simple 10mm eyepiece wasn't cutting it for me. The only one that it was really doing it justice, maybe, was Saturn, because you can see the rings quite easily, and maybe Jupiter, but... For Venus and definitely Mars, it wasn't doing it justice. So I wanted this this Barlow, okay? So I looked at three planets with it tonight a little bit. I looked at Venus, I looked at Mars, and I looked a little bit at Saturn, but it was difficult because around that time is when it started to get cloudy, and uh, so the, the views of Saturn weren't really that great, so it was kind of hard to judge uh, how this performed against Saturn but I can probably make an, uh, an assumption based off the other two planets. Now, I would have to say that the most impressive planet to look at through this to me, and by the way, I used the Shorty Barlow with the 7.5 millimeter to get the maximum, that's the maximum zoom I can get, okay, at this point. Um, the most impressive planet to look at, in my opinion, was Venus, because Venus, as you can see from the test footage over on Voodoo Astronomy, um, through the 10 millimeter was basically just a giant bright, uh, you know, circle. And you could tell that it was in a phase, but it was very difficult to see that it was actually a planet or that it really had structure or anything like that. Um, now, I looked at it th through these two, like I said, and the results were incredible, all right? It actually looked through this like a three-dimensional object. It didn't look like just, you know, a big bright white circle. It actually looked like a planet. You could tell it had three-dimensional effects, and that's really cool because Venus is the closest planet to us, and so uh, we have a, a great opportunity to, to see a planet very close up to us in Venus. And actually using this, it cuts down on the brightness because this smaller peephole lets in less light, um, and so uh, it cut down on Venus's brightness, and you could see the structure, the three-dimensional sh shape of the planet, which was really cool. I really enjoyed looking at Venus through this, okay? Then I switched to Mars, which previous to having this, basically, Mars looked like a red dot. That's about it, all right? It didn't look like a planet at all. It just looked like a red speck and really wasn't very impressive. Now, looking through here, you could definitely tell it was a planet. Now, it was not as, as close or as impressive as Venus, but of course Mars is further away and smaller than Venus. But you could definitely see uh, that it was a planet. Now, the magnification still, in my opinion, isn't going to be good enough to see things like polar ice caps. It's possible to catch a glimpse of them maybe, but it is summertime right now, uh, at least in the, where I am in the northern hemisphere. I don't know if it's summertime on Mars or anything like that, but I know in the, in the summertime on Mars that the polar ice caps do get reduced. So I don't know if that could play into it, but it was definitely a much better shot of Mars than I've ever gotten, okay, with these two. And then, of course, like I said, I looked at Saturn, but 
it looked it, it Saturn was a lot closer I could tell that but it was difficult to, to tell how well these things performed on Saturn because it was kind of cloudy now as far as the filters there's no there's no moon tonight it's a new moon tomorrow actually so there's no moon to observe uh, with this filter but I did try this filter out actually on Venus because it's so bright and it did actually make a, a difference and it looked pretty good through it now it's not necessary not necessary really for Venus because the this eyepiece really does cut down the light that Venus puts out so it's not really necessary to use this but it didn't hinder the look of Venus okay then I tried using a few of these on I used the red and the yellow on Mars I couldn't really notice much of a difference because again uh, Mars even though I did get a better look at it it still was a little far away in my opinion so I couldn't really tell much and then I tried to use the yellow filter to look at Saturn and from what I could tell um, it could have been just my eyes playing tricks on me but it did actually look like with the yellow filter on Saturn I could actually see a little bit of cloud banding on Saturn maybe that's my eyes playing tricks on me but that's what it seemed like to me okay the only thing I noticed on Mars was that this just made Mars blood red and this made Mars piss yellow I mean that's that's all I noticed so so far good results with this alright so I'm gonna need a much better night to to do that but bottom line is I got this accessory kit mainly for planetary viewing okay now it can be used for other things but I really got this for planetary viewing for the ultimate zooms uh, with the Barlow with the 7.5 mil eyepiece um, and these filters I got it for planetary and lunar observing okay basically and so so far it seems to be performing pretty well I would love to get out there real early tomorrow and, catch, and maybe catch a look at Jupiter before it sets to see how it performs um, I'd really like to see that so maybe I can get out there early tomorrow and and see that um, now as far as footage as I said no way I'm filming through a 7.5 mil eyepiece. It's never going to happen. Okay, I need like a nano camera to do that. So, unfortunately, you're not going to get the perfect zoomed up images that I get through here because I just, it's impossible. Now, what I'm thinking of possibly doing is putting the 20 mil eyepiece because it has a much, it has a nice big viewing area for me to actually put the camera in. Okay. Of hooking this guy up to... That, that's the numbers you can see in there, isn't it? Yep, sure enough. Huh, that's crazy. Um, it's the numbers on the bottom of this white thing, 317. Anyway, um, putting this in the, in the thing and then putting this with the Barlow to make it... Um, basically, I can get the same magnification with this through the Barlow that I get with the 10 millimeter eyepiece okay because this is a 20 millimeter when I put it in the Barlow it basically makes it a 10 millimeter eyepiece so I can basically get the same zoom that I get with the 10 millimeter with this with a much bigger viewing area for me to do filming alright and so I'm thinking that that's definitely a viable option and probably my is my best and only option right now it's a pain to film through the 10 millimeter eyepiece with the tiny the tiny dot I'm not going to be able to film through this. That's not going to happen. So I'm thinking the best option for me right now would be to film through this 20 mil eyepiece with the Barlow. Okay, but that's going to be. I'm going to have to test it out. Obviously, see what happens. Um, but to me, that's probably the best way to go. And uh, I will be doing more experimenting with this stuff, especially with the filters. Um, you know that that type of stuff as we go um, and as the skies get get uh, you know clearer and I and I get off for the summer and get some time to do some observing um, I'll, I'll mess with all of these and see what I can do but I wanted to show you guys this accessory kit let you know I do have it now um, very excited about having the accessories especially the Barlow and uh, I will be using this stuff and uh, hopefully getting some better footage with this guy and this guy combined hopefully later in the future so thanks guys for watching I'm Voodoo51292 and uh, hope to see you guys soon with more astronomy things so I'll see you later